Uh, my name is Richard Carlson. I'm the Senior Energy Policy Associate at the Mowat Center, not the Mowat Institute. Everyone seems to get that wrong. I think we should rename, change it. Um, and I'm here to talk about Hydro One. So I think there are really two issues to be talking about when you're talking about the possible privatization, partial privatization of Hydro One. The first is the energy. What will this mean for consumers? How will, and how will energy prices, how will the energy sector, how will the governance and the regulation of the energy sector change with the privatization? The second is really more about the public policy. What do we want privatized? What do we want publicly owned? And questions about what, how money should be spent and what should be spent better. I am just an energy policy associate, so I'm only talk about energy governance. That's the area that I really know the best, is how, how, the, gov how the sector is regulated, how the sector is governed, and what would a privatization mean to Hydro One and the sector. The second thing I want, so but when you talk about Hydro One, it's also important to talk about um, what is Hydro One, what is it done. Hydro One is really two companies. It is first, it's transmission companies, the so people that operate the high voltage lines that connect the major generating stations like Bruce Power to the local distribution companies like Toronto Hydro, and it's, they operate the huge high voltage lines. That's about 55% of their business is operating huge voltage lines. The second part of Hydro One is that it operates as a local distribution company, kind of like the Toronto Hydro in rural areas and other areas of, um, of Ontario. So it's kind of both a transmission company, transmitting the huge volumes of power from the power companies, as well as a distribution company, which is just transmitting to certain parts of the province that don't have their own municipal own generator. Now what does, that, what does that mean? For most consumers, for example in Toronto Hydro, about 10% of your bill is transmission. That's the Hydro One proportion. Um, and about 25% is distribution. So about 35% is the wires for your average residential bill, it's about 35%. 10% transmission, 25% wires. The rest of that, the rest of your bill is regulatory charges and the cost of, like, of generating electricity and purchasing the electricity. So any change that would happen to Hydro One of the rates would only, for someone from Toronto, only affect about 10% of your electricity bill. Uh, for high voltage customers, for big factories, it would be a bit higher because they use it a bit more, so it would be about 15%-ish, depending, um, depending on how you do that. So that's the main thing. Is that well, how it actually affects. Hydro One will not affect the price of electricity because Hydro One does not generate any electricity. It does owns no generating stations. It is just a wires company. It just transmits that. It just transmits that power. The second, so now that we look at the rates that Hydro One charges is based, is set by the Ontario Energy Board, which is an independent regulatory agency that has these big fancy hearings and they sit around and uh, they argue about legal points and they write really long 300 page findings and they decide what, what the policy is going to be. That would stay the same regardless of who owns Hydro One. And that's done for all wireless companies in the province. That's done for Toronto Hydro, that's done for Hydro Ottawa, that's done for Enersource, and 10% of Enersource, if Enersource which is in Mississauga, is owned by private investors. That is, and that, is done, that was done for Hydro One, and that will continue to be done exactly the same way after the, if Hydro One is partially privatized. Uh, now there are problems with the OEB process. I've written quite a bit about some problems with the OEB considering consumer, consumer representation and uh, enforcement and how hard they can be on some utilities. But that is a problem that would exist regardless of whether or not Hydro One is partially privatized or not. So that really does not click into that aspect of it there as well. Um, so, so when you come down to it, because hydro, the partial privatization of Hydro One is not really an energy question, which is kind of strange because I'm an energy analyst, so I'm kind of telling you that what I'm saying is of almost no importance. But it is kind of more of a public policy issue. It's kind of whether or not, what do we want to own the utilities? Do we want to, do, should private, public utilities, should they be publicly owned? Should they be privately owned? And is there any problem with how the sector is organized now in terms of changing it that way? whether or not these things should be done. Okay. Thank you very much.